Okay. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Praise the Lord Jesus. I just pray that y'all bless today in Jesus' name and that y'all fight in the good fight of fate and wage in a good warfare. We are in a battle and our Lord and Savior is a commander of a mighty army that he is raising up. And he is going to train us for battle. The Bible says in Psalms 144, 1, that he is the Lord our God who trains our hands for war and our fingers for battle. So our Lord is raising up soldiers and he is going to train us how to engage in warfare and to bring resistance against the enemy because we are in a battle. So glory be to the Lamb of God. I'm going to go ahead on and pray us in. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Just thanking you, Father, for these opportunities to share a word with your people. I ask, Father, that you would lead me and guide me, help me to speak on this message, and that you would minister to, to those who are listening. And I ask this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope y'all blessed today. And I just pray that you continue to grow in Christ. And that you get your focus on maturing in the spirit of the Lord because this is where we are moving to we are moving to a place of maturity and in order for that maturity in our lives to take place we have to not be so centered on ourselves and what's happening with us but we need to be focused on what God's doing in our life we need to set our focus upon the kingdom of God because the devil will try to get us to focus on all kind of other things so that he can use that to steal away the desire that we have in our hearts to do things for God's kingdom, to want to grow closer to the Lord. Because it's those desires for other things that begins to choke out the word of God. And the devil has a, a way of bringing so many types of of obstacles into our lives and get us to focus on these things so that it can snuff out the fire of God in our lives and uh, that's what it does it chokes out the fire it chokes out the truth the Bible talks about the thorns of life how the sower sows the seed amongst thorns and the thorns choke out that seed and it doesn't produce no fruit. It chokes out the truth of the word of God. And in the thorns of life is like the desire for other things. The cares of life. The desire for riches. All kind of other things come into our life to break our focus off of the kingdom of God. Because Satan knows if he can break our focus, he can begin to drain us of our power. Our Christian walk is totally dependent upon us being absolutely focused upon the kingdom of God. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 that we are to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto us. And this is where our focus need to be. We need to be totally focused on God's kingdom. Because we are soldiers, we are warriors, we are peculiar people, like the scripture says, we different, we brought out of the world. God brings us into the reality of what life is all about, and life is about a spiritual conflict, and we need to really step into this reality and open up our, our eyes to this, because if we don't see it like this, we will easily get caught up in the illusion of life. And the illusion of life is just normality. Look at everybody. They caught up in the illusion of life. They eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. They are just living and existing. 
They are not living with an eternal perspective. They are just caught up in the illusion of life. They are working jobs. They are tending to their families. They are doing things in the world, caught up in the things of this world, and they are out of sync with reality. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, that the God of this age blinds the minds of people who don't believe. Least the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ would shine on them. And how does Satan blind people? He blinds them with the illusion of life. He keeps them distant from the truth of God's word because Satan knows that the truth of God's word is what illuminates people to reality. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The truth makes you free from being stuck in the illusion of life. Alienated from the life of God. And this is what you see going on in the world right now. Everybody is in this place of delusion. It's a big old lie everybody is living in. They are stuck right now. They are stuck in a rut. And God has opened up our eyes into the reality of what life's all about. It's a conflict. It is war. There is real demons. God has called his church to be a militant church. We are to open the eyes of those who are in darkness and open them up to the truth of God's word. To open them up to the power of Jesus Christ so that they would come into the knowledge of the truth and be saved and be delivered and set free. Because many people right now are under demonic oppression. There is a real war that is being waged for the souls of humanity. And the problem with people are demons. Demons are being they are active in everybody's lives and they are keeping people in this place of oppression. Notice how everything just got louder right now. It's almost like everything started getting louder when I started talking about demons. Demons are real and they are waging war against our souls. They are trying to deceive us. The Bible says that in the book of uh, First Timothy... It says, now the Spirit expressly says that in the later times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed uh, to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. So there is deceiving spirits in the world, and they are constantly strategizing against us. They are trying to trip us up and hinder us in our walk with our Lord and Jesus Christ. They are trying to stop us from moving to advance the kingdom of God. They want to steal away your self-esteem. They want to make you feel like you're worthless, like you have no value. But in God's eyes, you are valuable. But the enemy uses all kind of people in our lives, circumstances, to try to pound us and pound us and pound us to get us into a place where we will start to feel like there's no use. I might as well just give up. I'm not doing nothing for the Lord. Come on now. You ever felt like that? Because there's times in my life where things happened in my life and the enemy came in the heat of the pressure and said, if you belong to God, why is this happening to you? If you called by the Lord, why are you going through this? Why don't you just give up, Jacob? Why don't you just give up? And this is his, his strategy against the born-again believer. He is trying to just take the fight out of us. He is trying to get us into this position where he can wear us down to the point that we don't want to fight no more. We start to believe the lies that he's instilling into our minds because that's what he does. He tries to make us think on what he wants us to think on. He wants us to believe what he wants us to believe. Praise the Lord. So the video cut out. And um, but glory be to the Lamb of God. This is what 
the devil wants to do in our lives. He is bringing opposition against us. He wants us to believe what he wants us to believe so we can see ourselves how he wants us to see ourselves. You know, the devil wants to see yourself as a loser because he's a loser. He, the devil wants you to see yourself as if you're not valuable to God. And um, if he can get you in this place where you start to actually see yourself because you're believing the lies that he's putting inside of your, your mind, he can bring you into a place where you actually begin to live out that reality. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 23, it says, As a man think it in his heart, so he is. See, the devil wants you to start to see yourself as he sees you so that you can begin to live out that reality in your life. If you start to believe that you know use to God, guess what happens? You start to fall back. You stop reading your Bible. You stop praying. Why? Because you believing that you're no use to God. You believing what you're doing is not benefiting people's lives. It's not benefiting God's kingdom. So because you believing this, what happens is you slowly start to lose that desire. Because you keep thinking on what the devil wants you to think on. Oh, you're not doing nothing for, for God. You're not valuable. Them people are laughing at you. Them people are mocking at you. And praise the Lord, people are going to laugh. People are going to mock. The Bible says that we are peculiar people. It's a, and that word peculiar means that we are strange. We are weird. We're odd. <laughs> praise the Lord. When we come to the Lord, we become weird and we become odd. People think we weird when we say, man, you need to throw that that garbage machine talking about the television out because it's polluting your spiritual life. And people will think you weird when you tell people to get rid of their TV. <laughs> you know, and, and we do. We become weird to the world because, you know, we're not part of the world no more. And, um, you know, so you got to expect people to think like that about you and not let that stuff get you down because the devil will come and he'll try to bring that to the surface and keep that in your memory. Oh, look, they laughing at you. They mocking at you. They not listening to you. They not receiving from you. You know, and if you're not careful, you can let that stuff really get to you and you can begin to believe what the devil is saying. Because brothers and sisters, this is serious. This is real. The devil's trying to wear us down. He's trying to come against us, bring opposition against us. He, he wants to make you ineffective for the kingdom of God. This is why we have to keep our focus solely centered on God's kingdom and begin to war against that opposition that the devil brings against our mind. It's a mental opposition. The battlefield is the mind of the born again Christian. We are brought out of the illusion of life and brought into the reality of what life is really about. And it's about warfare. And when God opens your eyes to reality and the devil realizes that, he's coming against you. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8, that the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He is looking for people to come against. He is looking for people to trip them up in their walk. He is coming against and strategizing against the born again believer. He's going to try to make you think, oh, you ain't a son of God. This is why the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 that we are to put on the armory of God. It says, be strong in the Lord in the power of his might that you may be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. What are the wiles of the devil? The onslaughts that he brings against your mind. The warfare that he brings against your mind. The Bible also says in Ephesians 6, put on the helmet of salvation. What that means is knowing who you are in Christ. Why? Because when the pressure comes against you, the devil comes. And he says, oh, if you really belong to God... Why is this happening? Oh, if you really belong to God, why is God not doing this for you? 
He comes to try to steal away your identity in Christ and cause you to doubt who you are. And he did that to Jesus in the wilderness. Remember when Jesus was in the wilderness and he was fasting and the devil came against him? The devil said, if you are the son of God, he says, turn these stones into bread. What Jesus said, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out the mouth of God. So you see, the devil came to try to tempt him to doubt who he was. He says, if you are the son of God, do this. Doesn't he do that same thing to us? Oh, if you belong to God, why is this happening to you? You know, if you belong to God, why is your family being uh, uh, aggressive towards you? You know, why are these people coming against you when they're supposed to love you if you belong to God? Doesn't God supposed to bring peace in your life? He'll tell you all kind of things to try to get you to doubt who you are in Christ. And this is what he does. He is the tempter. He is the accuser of the brethren. Oh, he'll accuse you and bring accusations against your mind. And if you're not careful and you start to listen to them things, it'll bring you down. All them accusations come against your mind. Accusations of, of being worthless. He'll remind you of your mistakes. You can have mistakes that you did five years ago and these things will still be brought up. I remember what Paul says in the book of Philippians. He says, I forget about them things that are behind me. And he says, I press on into the higher calling that I have in Christ Jesus. He lays hold of that higher calling. He forgets about them things that are behind him because if you stay meditating on the past, it's going to keep you in the past. It's going to keep you from walking in the destiny that God has for you. And the enemy knows this, so he's going to bring accusations from the past up in your mind. All kind of thoughts come up about mistakes you made. And uh, they start to limit you if you don't cast that stuff down. And it's important that we engage in warfare. The enemy is real. He is strategizing and he is determined to take us out. So glory be to the Lamb of oh God. Praise the Lord Jesus for another day. I just pray that y'all bless today. Engage the enemy in warfare. James chapter 4 says, Submit to the Lord, resist the devil, and he will flee. We have to bring resistance against the enemy. Don't be holding grudges. That's another subject that I'm going to get into. Let go of the grudges. Let go of the unforgiveness because that's going to limit you. In moving forward in your walk with Jesus Christ. You have to let go of the grudges. Resist the devil. Walk in love. The Bible says that we owe no one anything but love. And love is forgiveness. We need to walk in this position of forgiveness. Not allowing people to hurt us, not holding on to grudges, because that's going to limit us in our lives. And if we keep holding on to it, guess what? Bitterness settles in and it begins to spoil us on the inside. And it eventually it will progress to hatred. And um, that's a place that more likely if a person gets, they won't come back unless God, by supernatural intervention, intervenes and brings uh, supernatural deliverance to that person. So we have to guard our hearts, brothers and sisters. The devil is real. He's fighting us in our minds. Wage a good warfare. Resist the devil. The Bible says, again, in James 4, resist him. Resist what he's bringing against your mind. Resist him trying to make you be angry at your family members. Resist him trying to make you be angry at brothers and sisters that just misunderstand you all the time. Resist that and choose to walk in love because the devil hates love. Boy, he hates love. He hates it when a person walks in forgiveness. So uh, praise the Lord Jesus. Choose this day to walk in love and to walk in forgiveness. So praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all be blessed today. 
And y'all have a glorious and amazing day in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.